extinct animals have long been a source of fascination for many, and non-avian dinosaurs in particular have drawn great interest thanks to their huge and daunting sizes. Through the years, much debate has occurred around this topic, especially about which predatory dinosaur was the biggest to ever live. Meanwhile, terrestrial mammalian carnivores have gotten much less attention on their sizes, perhaps since mammals are still around or because they never attained the sizes of dinosaurs. On top of this, when people finally do discuss this topic, there is one extinct animal that is almost always the first one to be named, and without much argument at that. This is the Andrusarchus. Most believe that this strange carnivore is the undisputed king of mammalian predators on land. And yet, this isn't actually the case, as most signs actually point to another, lesser-known predator taking this crown, the Arctotherium. While this beast's true size has only been revealed in the last few years, its existence has been known for far longer with remains first being unearthed over 170 years ago in Argentina. The original specimen was not as large as later ones, but it was still big enough to turn a few heads. Its fossils were also in excellent condition, allowing paleontologists to quickly determine that it was a new kind of bear, which along with its bulkier build led to it being named the Arctotherium, meaning the bear beast. It was also given the species name Bonariense, a nod to the city in which it was originally located. The exceptional nature of its bones didn't only help paleontologists figure out it was a bear, but it also allowed them to further place it as a member of a specific family, the Tremarctinae family. This was thanks to its uniquely shaped skull, which was heavily deepened, giving off the illusion of being short. This is a feature seen in all Tremarctinae and has led to them being nicknamed the short-faced bears. Currently, there are four known genera in this group, only one of which is still living, the spectacled bear. The group is perhaps best known not for the survivor, but for the extinct member Arctidus, a giant bear that is often considered one of the largest mammalian hunters to have walked the earth. And a giant it was, with large males clocking in at 2,100 pounds, or 950 kilos, making it about the same size as the largest recorded polar bears, and just shy of the Andrusarchus, which currently is thought to have weighed no more than one ton. The large nature of the Arctidus also made it bigger than the Arctotherium bonariense, which is believed to have weighed a maximum of 500 kilos or 1,100 pounds. But its inferiority to Arctidus would not last forever, as since its discovery, other species of this mighty beast have been described, with five being known today. This includes the Angustidens, Bonariense, Tarihense, Vetustum, and Wingay. All these species of Arctotherium were unique, in when they existed and their dentition. However, the biggest difference among them all was their sizes, as one in particular completely dominated the others when it came to stature, the Angustidens. This is by far the most well-known species of Arctotherium, and rightfully so as it was an absolute titan, the likes of which may have never been seen before. Originally, Paleontologists believe that this species grew to be between 410 and 1,200 kilograms, or 910 or 2,600 pounds. At this size, it was a contender for being the largest bear of all time, but not a contender for the title of biggest mammalian land predator overall. However, the short-faced bears, including the remaining member, are well known for having a high level of variety in size amongst individuals, especially between genders, with males sometimes being 50% larger than females. This fact also extended to the Arctotherium, and thus, over the years, dig teams have occasionally found massive male angustidens that pushed the envelope of how large terrestrial mammalian predators could get. And this all came to a climax in 2011, when a specimen located in Buenos Aires, 
blew everyone away. The individual in question had a giant humerus radius and ulna, which based on their measurements led scientists to believe that this bear potentially weighed a staggering 4,500 pounds or 2,040 kilograms. In other words, over two tons. At this weight, it even outweighed some well-known large theropods, including the average adult Allosaurus, and was thrice the weight of the biggest known Ceratosaurus. However, the paleontologist who estimated this size was wary of this large number and believed that a more likely weight for this titan was 1,760 kilograms or 3,600 pounds. If this is true, it would still make the Arctotherium significantly larger than any terrestrial mammalian predator today, and a tad bit heavier than the extinct Sebekid Burinasuchus. This is monumental, as the Burinasuchus is widely considered the largest terrestrial predator to have lived since the dinosaurs. Additionally, this Arctotherium specimen wasn't just a giant when it came to weight, as it was extremely tall as well reaching 14 feet or 4.3 meters when standing upright. At this height, it was taller than both the average T-Rex and large African elephants. Its considerable stature also resulted in paleontologists starting to refer to it as the giant short-faced bear, a nickname it now shares with Arctodus simus. The source behind its gigantism is believed to have stemmed from the extinction of the Chapal Melania a highly specialized omnivore that had a diet very similar to that of modern bears, especially the spectacled bear. This may have created intense competition, and thus with it gone, the Arctotherium was able to swell in size within a very short period, allowing it to become the largest predator around during the early Pliocene and early Pleistocene. And with this useful trait on its side, the Arctotherium became a killer of giants as carbon isotope studies show that it had a preference for consuming large quantities of meat, specifically flesh that came from horses, tapirs, camelids, macroconids, glyptodonts, giant ground sloths, toxodontids, and gomphotheres. The location of damage found on these herbivores, coupled with the discovery of cracked and worn teeth amongst the Arctotherium, implies that it both scavenged and actively hunted these animals, typically delivering death by using its large canines to bite the neck and back of prey with bone-crushing force, while also using its large robust forepaws to deal additional damage. And despite its outward appearance of being quite cumbersome, the Arctotherium angustidens was actually surprisingly efficient at catching these animals thanks to its proportionally long legs that granted it a high running speed, which may have even exceeded 40 miles or 60 kilometers per hour, making it about as fast as a grizzly bear, which is significantly lighter. It also had adept senses like smell, that it could use to help it capture prey as studies on the structure of its skull indicate that it had a powerful nose that could pick up scents multiple miles or kilometers away. However, Despite possessing quite the arsenal, the giant short-faced bear wasn't just simply a bloodthirsty predator, as dentition suggests that it was ultimately an omnivore that would consume fleshy roots, fruits, berries, grasses, and forbs when the chance arose. This diverse diet, along with its size, granted it yet another advantage over its competing predators, which consisted of the Smilodon, Theriodictus, Canis, Protocyon, jaguars, and cougars. Some of these contemporary carnivores like the Smilodon were somewhat comparable in size, but not big enough to pose a serious threat to large adult bears if alone. This allowed the giant short-faced bear to reign supreme in its home of Argentina and possibly El Salvador and Bolivia as well. Within these lands, located specimens showed this giant had a preference for open plains, but would venture in forested areas as well. Rare finds further implied that the Arctotherium would occasionally inhabit paleoburrows, in which multiple bodies have been found, leading to the hypothesis that this bear may have prowled the lands in familial groups. Despite showing an aptitude for burrows, it's not believed to have created them. 
Rather, it's agreed that the Arctotherium was a conqueror of burrows that were dug by various Xenarthans. These burrows proved to be a big part of this bear's life and was even a source of competition and conflict amongst individuals. Such battle for burrows occurred often enough that paleontologists believed that this bear alone was accountable for an exponential increase seen in the number of paleo burrows during the early Paleocene, as constant takeovers forced Xenarthans to regularly evacuate and start over, assuming they weren't killed. These fights were quite vicious in nature, often leading to deep injuries that were prone to infection. However, burrows alone were not the only source of conflict amongst the species, as adults had a high level of damage in their skeletons, suggesting a life of violence. Some even believe that the high percent of cracked teeth seen in this bear is partially attributed to fights with other individuals. This tough lifestyle may have been a considerable source of mortality amongst adults and subadults, but this didn't stop this giant. What did though, was the ecosystem itself. As the early Pleistocene ended and the middle Pleistocene began, the Carnivore Guild, aka the group of carnivore species that shared the habitat and competed for the same resources, started to diversify and mature, creating new changes and challenges for the Arctotherium. Eventually, it stopped growing in size, and then it slowly started to disappear. Until 700,000 years ago, when the Arctotherium angustidens fully vanished. This spelled the end for the giant stage in the Arctotherium's existence, but not its entire story, as the Angustidans' legacy lived on in four new smaller, medium-sized species that emerged. This shrinkage was quite surprising, as in America where the Arctidus was located, its descendants got only bigger as time progressed, not smaller. However, ultimately the size decrease would work in the favor of the Arctotherium, as these newer species would end up outlasting the Arctidus by thousands of years. These four species could be divided into two distinct categories, with one group being the Arctotherium that did a complete 180, shifting from being mainly carnivorous to highly herbivorous. This included the Vetustum and Wingae, which were also the smallest Arctotherium species. Studies on their isotope levels showed they specialized in C3 vegetative material like fruits and leaves, but on occasion would still consume meat as indicated by spikes in their isotope levels. These rare meat snacks are believed to have come from the ground sloth, Nothrotherium, and possibly through cannibalism as well. This overall switch in diet is believed to have been due to their more northern range, which brought them into contact with many of the great American interchange predators, creating high and fierce competition forcing them to adapt to a different diet. Some of these carnivores on the scene included American lions, dire wolves, gray wolves, coyotes, and the Smilodon fatalis. Despite the primarily herbivorous diet taking pressure off competition with large predators, the Wingae and Vetustum now had to compete with smaller omnivores, presenting a whole new set of challenges. While this was going on, their southern counterparts the Bonariense and Tarihense had retained the giant Arctotherium's preference for consuming meat. This was made possible due to their more southern range of Chile and Argentina, meaning they did not have to worry as much about the Great American Interchange. Of the two, Arctotherium Tarihense was smaller, being about 20% lighter than the Bonariense, but both had very similar diets which consisted of animals ranging between 100 kilograms or 220 pounds and 300 kilograms or 661 pounds, meaning that small to medium sized camelids and horses were the main parts of their diets. It's also believed that these two practiced higher levels of scavenging and bone consumption than their giant predecessor in order to supplement their urine for meat. As unlike the Angustidans, the Arctotherium were not the largest animals around and therefore could not tackle every prey in their environment, resulting in them leaving adolescent and younger megafauna to bigger predators like giant jaguars and the Smilodon. Other competitors that were around at the time that further created pressure included large canids and even each other. Ultimately though, despite being smaller, the diverse diets of these new Arctotherium 
proved highly successful, and they continued to thrive for another 691,000 years, following the demise of the large Angustidans, until they too eventually vanished. Dated specimens show that the four went extinct between 12 and 9,000 years ago, with Winge holding on the longest in parts of Venezuela. What's fascinating is that they all died out around the exact same time, despite inhabiting different areas and possessing varied diets, leading to numerous questions regarding why it went extinct. While it's hard to pinpoint the exactness of its demise, paleontologists have pointed out that the quaternary extinction event, for whatever reason, was exceptionally rough on bears, especially those that did not have conservative morphologies. Meaning, that the abnormal robust structure and relatively elongated limbs of Arctotherium, which are not typically seen in other bears, may have played a substantial role in its inability to adapt to a changing world, bringing a final end to what was once the largest mammalian predator ever. But if you found this deep dive into this giant mammalian predator interesting, you should check out our videos on the American lion and dire wolf, both of which were contemporary predators albeit in North America instead of South. And like always, thanks for watching, and until next time on Extinct Zoo.